After this brief overview of Jupyter Notebooks, we will now start with the notebooks further. Before we show you the great Python libraries, I would like to quickly overview how to use Unix commands through a Jupyter Notebook. Although the Python language itself provides ways to use Unix shell commands, Jupyter Notebooks provides an easier and more interactive way to use Unix commands. We simply put an exclamation mark before the commands to execute them like we execute them on a Unix shell. On a side note, Jupyter will use your default shell to execute these commands, so any adjustment needed to execute these commands should be based on the operating system your Jupyter environment is set up on. Let's now switch to our notebook to execute some of the commands we reviewed as useful commands for data scientists. Let's start with ls. To display the contents of the data directory called Unix in the same directory with this notebook, we use the exclamation mark ls command. So in my notebook environment and in your week 3 folder, you have a cold folder called dot .unix. So here we'll go and execute that particular shell. It says there's a shakespeare.txt, a data file in it. To store the name of this data file, I'll use a local variable in the notebook uh, the way we would normally use in Python script. So here we say file name dot unix shakespeare dot txt. To display this variable, we can use the unix way and use the echo command in Unix with an exclamation mark in front of it to display the value stored by the file name variable. Or simply use the print function in Python. Then we don't need the Unix-like dollar sign. We just use it as a Python variable. So here, when we execute it with shift enter, we see that both echo and print execute the same, uh, uh, output the same uh, line. Next, let's display the first and last few lines of the file to get a basic understanding of the file header and footer. Uh, for this, we'll use the head command. Um, so I can quickly execute head with an exclamation mark, minus n, three for the top three lines, and dollar file name for uh, that Unix variable resolution. And when I say shift enter, um, we'll see that um, the top three lines are displayed. I can display top 30 lines if I wanted. If I change that uh, to 30, the number of lines, I'll see the top 30 lines uh, of that data file, which is some disclaimer on uh, the copyrights of the Shakespeare's works. <clears throat> Same for the bottom set of lines. It's important to view the top and bottom of the line uh, bottom of the file because uh, then that gives us some understanding. For that we use the um, exclamation mark tail command. So when I say shift enter and execute that, uh, I'll see that uh, bottom 10 lines. Let's change that number to something biggish like 40 so we could see actually there's something about that about Shakespeare. So we see that the end of one of his works. So that should tell us already, it looks like a big file. It's all of Shakespeare's works. And in the top and bottom, we can't even see the data yet. Uh, we just see those disclaimers. Um, how big it is? Uh, how big is it? We can use the word count to display the number of words, lines, character to figure that out. So here I'll say exclamation mark WC, dollar file name. Um, when I do that, I get uh, about uh, 124,000 uh, lines, uh, words, and characters following that number. To get just the number of lines, uh, we use WC with the minus L option here, um, which will be uh, in the next in8 output. Um, we can also use pipes and filters to do the same thing, to work with the cat command and the WC command. Now let's look for an occurrence of the word parchment in the file. As you might remember, the command we'll use for this is grep. Uh, using the grep command, we'll display all the lines that have the word parchment 
in, uh, in it at least once. So here we say exclamation mark grip minus i parchment dollar file name. So this should give us all the lines when I say shift enter um, in that line. So basically each of these lines have the word parchment somewhere in there. But exactly how many lines? Right? We can take advantage of the pipes and filters here again. Uh, this time, let's look for the word liberty instead of parchment, just for a change. What we'll do is, um, we'll cat the file name through a pipe into grip and looks for uh, liberty uh, in the output and count the number of lines at the output of grip which should be something like this. So if we did not have WC minus L, let's delete that for a sec, we would have just a liberty word because we used the minus O option. And if I cat that into WC, the one that we just removed, we'll see that there's 71 of those lines. Since I used grab with the minus O option, I didn't see the full line. I just saw liberty uh, as the word. Now let's use the said stream editor to replace all occurrences of the word parchment with the word manuscript and write the results to a new file called temp.txt. We can do that and then search for the word manuscript in the new temp.txt file. So we'll use the sed command for uh, said. And here we say, find, search for parchment, replace it by manuscript globally, and input is our file name, and we'll write that through a redirect to temp.txt. I quickly execute that. Now I should have temp.txt. You should all have temp.txt in your um, week three directory that you opened your uh, notebook from. So then, um, we will go and count uh, or find the number of occurrences of manuscript uh, in this temp.txt. So we see that the same lines that were listed for parchment before, they are listed, but instead of that, parchment was replaced by manuscript. This could be useful when you're quickly replacing a set of data values uh, with some other data values. Now let's look at how we use the sort command together with the head command in a pipe and filter. Head gives us the first five lines here. Um, as you have seen before with the file name. If we sort those five lines, uh, the sort will put those lines in uh, ascending character order, L-T-I-O, in the character order uh, based on the ASCII numbers. Um, we can use different sort options. If we now pass this output to sort through a pipe, we will put the lines in ascending character order, just like this. Uh, we use different sort options sometimes. Um, here we see that library this is often is in uh, ascending character order, meaning based on their ASCII numbers. Uh, but what if we wanted to sort on the second set of words? So off is presented and releases. How do we do that? Right? Um, often, the data files we work with are space separated um, or comma separated. So we turn those as a, into a column in our data set. And we maybe want to sort based on that second column. So for that, we can take advantage of the sort uh, commands options. Uh, F is case insensitive, and uh, we are saying now sort on column number two with the rest of the commands. And I'll go ahead and run this. Uh, we see that is of presented and releases are in the right order now. Uh, next, we'll sort and find a number of unique lines. Remember, uh, we had 124,000-ish files uh, in our uh, 
data file, shakespeare.txt. Um, now let's find out how many unique lines. We'll sort and pass that to the unique command and count the number of lines. And we see that here we have less number of lines. So some lines were repeated, it looks like. We have about 110,000 lines there. To bring it all together, we will count the most frequent words in our data file. As you would remember, in our Unix exercises, we use the set stream editor command to do some processing to replace the spaces with a new line character. We will start by doing the same thing here. At the end of the sequence of unique character counts and sorting them, we will retrieve the top 15 using the head command. So that was the exact same pipe and filter we ran before. Uh, we only need the exclamation mark in the beginning for pipes and filters, as you see here. And then if you run this, um, we will, uh, it's still processing. As you see, the star is there. It didn't update that uh, run number in the input. Um, we'll see that the first 15 are displayed. And so sending, hand sort command is right, sending the last two errors, uh, but it's because head stops after 15 lines. Um, so how do we write this output to a file? We'll see this, you know, here, um, if we run this, we can write to uh, count versus words here with this command, shift enter. It's still running. As you see, there's a star there. We'll have to wait a little bit for it to run and finish. And the standard output from the command will be written to count versus words. And remember, sort gave us an error. That's the standard error coming out of the command. We'll see that still on the notebook interface, like here. So that's why we left that uh, error uh, in the command. So let's count or cat. Um, so display the contents of count versus words. Um, it's the top 15. Uh, we didn't remove the spaces, so some of them show up as that. Um, now, we will take advantage of Python matplot library to plot uh, the top 15 words in uh, Shakespeare's works. So here, again, in week five, uh, we'll learn more about, in, um, about matplotlib. But here we see a small uh, script using matplotlib. Um, to do just that, and it's displaying that the, I, and space, all of that um, plotted nicely on a graph. Um, as I mentioned before, we will learn more about matplotlib in week five. Uh, next, uh, we will discuss the NumPy library in Python. That should be fun. <laughs>